Saudi Arabia assumed command of two international task forces previously handled by foreign troops from the United Kingdom and Bahrain. Milka Sirikadis has the details. Earlier this week, the Saudi Arabian Navy officially took over the command of Coalition Task Force Sentinel from the British Royal Navy and the control of Combined Task Force 152 from the Bahrain Royal Naval Force through a handover ceremony. The Combined Task Force or CTF-152 is one of the five operational task forces under the 38 nation strong U.S.-led Combined Maritime Forces headquartered in Bahrain. Meanwhile, the Coalition Task Force Sentinel comprises an 11-nation international naval partnership tasked to protect maritime commerce in and around the Strait of Hormuz, a crucial waterway of Iran's southern coast. The Strait of Hormuz is one of the world's most essential straits since it is the quickest route to transport oil from the Middle East to the rest of the world. Earlier this month, the U.S. military sent thousands of troops to the Gulf region after accusing Iran of seizing foreign vessels in the strategic waterway. Conversely, Iran accused American military personnel of protecting smuggling activities in the Gulf region. The change of command occurred five months after Saudi Arabia and Iran restored diplomatic ties in a deal brokered by China. Reporting this has been Melchizedek Cadiz, SMNI News, Kuwait. In his Give Us is a program, Pastor Apollo Siki Buloy talked about the power struggle unfolding among world leaders, as evident in U.S. President Joe Biden's push for reforms within the International Monetary Fund and World Bank to counterbalance China's growing influence through BRICS. Jade Calabroso Fausto's report. Well, good afternoon. U.S. President Joe Biden will push for reforms within the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, and World Bank at the upcoming G20 summit on September 9. Biden aims to make the IMF and World Bank a positive and transparent alternative to challenge China's proposed development finance initiatives. Biden's push for reforms came following the success of the BRICS Leaders' Summit in South Africa, which resulted in the more countries joining the economic bloc in January 2024. These countries include Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. This move brings six of the world's largest oil producers into BRICS, and negotiations among these nations are expected to use their respective national currencies, posing a significant challenge to the U.S. dollar. This development is expected to strengthen the BRICS New Development Bank, established by the Association to Aid Developing Economies. Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ stated that this could signify the end of a unipolar world and the shift toward a multipolar world. Yung G20 or a group of 20 is made up of Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, South Korea, Turkey, UK, US and the European Union. Yung BRICS is composed of Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, and South Africa. At marami pang mga bansa yata ang sumasapi ngayon sa BRICS. Ano? So, a group of nations ang BRICS eh, invited the, uh, the BRICS group of nations invited six countries, Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates to join the emerging markets block as it made expansion a focus of this year's summit. Tapata na to. Pastor Apollo emphasizes that this is a power struggle and countries should carefully consider which side to align with. So, parang yung mga unipolar uh, world magiging multipolar world na. So, meron ng mga tapatan itong mga kapangyarihan ito ng mga world economies. So, sa balita ko, ang BRICS, they hold the uh, 41% of the world population which comprise of uh, how many percent of the world economy nasa kanilang mga kamay na yan ngayon. So, uh, kung ano ang itatapat dito at kung ano yung makainganyo sa mga bansa na sumapi dito ay para sa kanilang kapakanan kung nakikita lang ito ay makakabuti. Kaya meron na tayong mga choices. 
To recall one of the key agendas of the BRICS summit is de-dollarization, and this is being strongly advocated by Chinese President Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Brazilian President Lula da Silva, and South African President Cyril Ramaphosa. For God and my beloved Philippines, this has been Jade Calabroso. In Africa, the country of Gabon is facing a political crisis after its military seized power just minutes after the country's election body announced that their incumbent president had won a third term. Here's my report. A group of senior military officers in the Central African country of Gabon said they had seized power on Wednesday. The military officers appeared on television channel Gabon 24 to announce the coup and said they represented all Gabonese security and defense forces. According to them, the election results were cancelled, all state institutions were dissolved, and all borders of the country were shut down until further notice. The military's announcement came just minutes after the Gabonese Paul Body announced incumbent president Ali Bongo's election victory. Reports emerged that gunfire was heard in the capital, Libreville, following the announcement of the coup. Following the announcement, people took to the streets to show their support to the military coup leaders. Gabon is a small but oil-rich African country. It is the fifth largest oil-producing nation in Africa, and its government is a member of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC. The recent election victory of 64-year-old Ali Bongo would have been his third term as the president of Gabon. He won 64.2 percent of the votes in elections. Bongo was elected for the first time in 2009 after the death of his father, Omar Bongo Ondimba, who had been the president of Gabon for four decades. Meanwhile, the coup gained various reactions from the international community, particularly from its former colonial ruler, France, with Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne saying that they are following the situation closely. China also said it was closely following the situation and urged for the safety of Ali Bongo to be guaranteed. The Gabonese coup, if proved successful, would be the eighth coup in West and Central Africa since 2020, with the latest one held in Niger in July of this year. The military officers of Burkina Faso, Chad, Guinea, and Mali also seized power. Reporting, this has been Jane Cognita, SMNI News.